Hey, namaste goddess. It's Yogini Kala and I'm so glad you're here. This episode I will be uh, discussing how to connect with your ancestors and draw strength from that connection. Angelou from a poem that she wrote called um, To Our Grandmothers that she says, when I come as one, but I stand as 10,000. have to be, you know, your grand uncle who, who was an alcoholic, right? We go to our ancestors that were shamans, that were healers, that were teachers, that were spiritual leaders, uh, that were herbalists and, and helped women give birth and they're in all of our bloodlines. So connect with those very high ancestors that have um, healing for you. My perspective on this, you might want to check out my video on how to create a meditation space. But the first thing I would do is, um, whether you have an altar or a prayer space already, if you want to incorporate um, acknowledging and connecting with your ancestors on the altar you already have. So this is where it can get complicated. Um, but again, I'm just going to share, and you can share in the comments. I want to know if you agree, disagree, or have other ideas. I would love to hear them. When I say ancestors, you guys, my work in I'm continuing to study shamanism, and I will talk more about that in the upcoming year. Uh, so starting in about 2020, I'm going to talk more about shamanism. I'm not just talking about, in fact, the ancestors you know, and that's fine. You can include them as well on the altar. But what I'd like you to think of when I, uh, I've learned from my shamanic teacher is you want to work with your ancestors who were pre, prior to sort of any family trauma, if that makes sense. So current traumas in your family, like if you know the women in your family tend to be abused, right? Or the men are abusive in the family and the women are suffering, that type of thing. When you connect in spirit with your ancestors, just ask and put as an intention to connect with your ancestors who were healthy, who were prior to this rift or, or damage to the family line, okay? So what that would entail then, there are these birds like chirping really loudly outside my window, and that would entail then is looking back into your heritage and finding, because you're not going to have photographs, I'm talking, you know, 10 generations, 15 generations back, finding images that resonate for you to connect with your ancestry. Now this is where, as I said, it can get very complicated because if you take an ancestry test, what we all need to realize is within two generations, your ancestors can look very different than you look now, whatever your ethnic or racial background, if you even believe in race as an actual thing. Right, because where does one race really end and where does another begin, right? We're all, I really believe this, we're all really blended. Some of us more blended than others. And so to say that you may have Irish ancestry, yet you may appear Asian or Asian and African mix, but you have Irish ancestry. And so you want to connect with Celtic or you, you know, look Irish or Swedish and you find out that you actually have some Native American ancestry or native, um, say, Finnish ancestry, because in every culture there were sort of the people who were indigenous before they were conquered. And so, you know, say you're Swedish, but you find out you have Finnish ancestry from an ethnic Finnish group, right? That you're like, okay, wow. Um, so I just invite you to look beyond necessarily your current sense of your ancestry because it's way deeper than that. Um, and especially people of color, there's African ancestry and then very often there's ancestry from other parts of the globe. Just to be aware of that and don't feel um, that you can't explore your ancestry however it branches out. As I said, my, one story my teacher shared is that she was teaching a workshop and there was a man from like a well-to-do family, white family, and he was interested in shamanism and she'd been working with him and he was very serious and everything. And this was an ancestor weekend and he went back 
as she instructed and the ancestor that came forward was you know somebody brown skinned from Africa that was a direct ancestor of his you know many generations back and the guy was kind of shocked but that is who came forward and who wanted to work with him and nurture him and help him and help him answer questions and heal in his life and you know she just chuckled because given his background he was just really shocked and so again my my to all of my sisters out there um, whatever your background is that my channel is for all women like I say 45 want to thrive past 45 but you could be 30 because you want to keep thriving I don't know I'm just saying to you you know be really open to the fact that you have ancestors from backgrounds that you just really may not you may be drawn to Japan no known Japanese ancestry you are drawn to Buddhism and like Zen Buddhism and you see pictures of Kyoto and you just are like oh my god it's so beautiful so go beyond just the literal understanding of your ancestry you can start here but especially if you're going to do shamanic work be open that you're going to end up in a whole other part of the world very likely okay and that that is the beauty and the healing we women need to lead now is that we truly are interconnected in ways that are more complex than we know and that through our heart and through spirit we are all sisters we are interconnected and we're brothers and sisters and interconnected and that is what's going to help us ultimately to heal is not to dilute any heritage but to acknowledge our similarities our differences but also our similarities as human beings on this planet now so put on your altar what feels appropriate to you I think also the cultural appropriation you can examine that piece but I'm going meta on that in that you very likely if you were drawn to this have that in your bloodline have that in your background um, you know approach with sensitivity be aware but connect with your ancestors find symbols find imagery that works for you put it on your altar in many cu uh, cultures African culture Asian culture especially very strongly you do honor your ancestors eat with ritual with putting food or an item of of alcohol or something that they would drink you honor them that way this is very common around the world um, to put out an offering for your ancestors that could be something you consider doing or as I said you know just simply having a reminder of them thanking them including them in your prayers there are certain times of year uh, in fact around the time of, of Halloween and in other cultures it might be different times when it said the veil is thinner and you can really connect with with ancestors and that they do want to help you they do want to um, to support you I love that Oprah talks a good deal about this you can find clips of her talking about how when she walks into a room she feels that she walks in with her ancestors and I love that image you walk in with that support and again so when I walk into a room and particularly before I have something really challenging to do or I'm going to be in a circumstance where I feel I'm going to be you know up against um, some difficulties I will literally sit and I will call on that 10,000 mm -hmm. I will call on the, the ancestors I will call on those people who've come before me I will call on the women who forged a path that I might be able to sit in the room with all of those white men and love it so much uh, I, I, I call on I call on that because I know that my being where I am, and first of all, being who I am and where I am, didn't come just out of myself, that I come from a heritage. And so I own that, mm -hmm. and I step into that room, not just as myself, but I bring all of that, 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 that inner. All right, we go to our ancestors that were shamans, that were healers, that were teachers, that were spiritual leaders. Uh, that were herbalists and and helped women give birth and they're in all of our bloodlines so connect with those very high ancestors that have um, healing for you so I'd love to hear your comments or questions and I hope this helps just to start a conversation about um, including that connection to ancestry in your work in your spiritual work and in your healing Mwah. stay blessed namaste